Pennsylvania, do me a favor, send that man Dave McCormick to the U.S. Senate, put this Casey character out of a job. Another round of applause for Dave McCormick, all right? Your next senator from this great state. I'll tell you, somebody asked, outside was asking me on the way in, you guys are, you guys are great, I love you in Scranton. <laughs> said, hey, tell me one last time, how do you pronounce your name? I said, it's easy. It's Vivek like cake, and it's Ramaswamy like Ramaswamy, you know? <laughs> I got to give, uh, give a lot of credit to our friend DJT for coming right here <laughs> to Scranton, to Joe Biden's hometown. And look at this. Look who came out in Joe Biden's hometown. Now, how about this? If we deliver on November 5th, Joe Biden's hometown for Donald Trump, what do we tell the rest of the country with that, huh? <laughs> and somewhere, somewhere deep down inside in a place that he doesn't want to admit, I think maybe even Joe Biden is actually rooting for it. <laughs> Give him a MAGA hat in Scranton before you leave. I'll tell you something. We're in the middle of a national identity crisis right now. Faith, patriotism, hard work, family. These things have disappeared only to be replaced by these new secular cults, wokeism, transgenderism, climatism, covidism, depression, anxiety, fentanyl, suicide. These are symptoms of a deeper void in our country. We have a crisis of national pride spreading like an epidemic. Less than 16% of Gen Z says they're even proud to be an American anymore. We have a 25% recruitment deficit in our own US military. We are in a war for the survival of our country, for the survival of American self-confidence. And right now, more than ever, we need a commander in chief who will lead us to victory in that war. That man is the 45th and your next 47th president of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. <laughs> USA. USA, 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 USA. If you want to seal the border, vote Trump. If you want to grow the economy, vote Trump. If you want to restore law and order in this country, vote Trump. If you want to stay out of World War III in this country, vote Trump. If you want to revive our national identity in this country, vote Trump. If you want to make America great again, vote Trump. We are in a 1776 moment, folks. I'm telling you something. And I mean that in a positive way, actually. Think about it. What a special time to be alive in the spring of 1776. We could have been victims. Our founding fathers could have been victims, claimed to be victimized by the British monarchy. But they weren't victims. They were victorious. That's the moment we live in right now. And it took a band of our founding fathers to do it. My favorite one, Thomas Jefferson. He was 33 when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. I was 37 when I ran for U.S. president, youngest ever Republican to run. Thomas Jefferson was 33 when he wrote the whole ball game into motion. And he invented the swivel chair, by the way, while he was at it. <laughs> That's Thomas Jefferson for you. He's my favorite. You got the likes of my friend Elon Musk, who was here, what, last week in Pennsylvania. Give my man a round of applause there. Took a lot of guts for him to make the sacrifices and take the risks he's taken to speak out for Donald Trump. He's like our modern Benjamin Franklin, actually. Benjamin Franklin, the first time around, he invented the lightning rod. He invented the Franklin stove, one of the leading inventions of his time. I see somebody wearing a bifocal spectacle. That was actually invented by Benjamin Franklin as well. Elon Musk sending ships to outer space, inventing the next generation of vehicles. He's the Benjamin Franklin of our time, coming together with my friend J.D. Vance, like John Adams, the first vice president, cerebral, an abolitionist, a good man. And the man who's going to lead us from the front is the George Washington of our era. That's who Donald Trump is. He's the George Washington of our 1776 moment. He could fight, George Washington could, but he could also unite. And that's what I think Donald Trump is going to do that nobody in the media will admit. He'll be the president who actually unites this country. We are in the middle of a war right now. I won't say that lightly. 
But our war is not against our fellow citizen or our neighbor. They're not our enemy. Our enemy is an ideology. Donald Trump understands that. And the way we're going to unite this country, the way we're going to win this election, including in Pennsylvania, look, is everything going to go exactly as we want it to? Probably not. But a landslide minus some shenanigans is still a decisive victory. That's how we're going to unite this country. That's how we're going to save America this time around. We don't have to be this nation in decline that we've become. We don't have to be ancient Rome. Decline is a choice. I truly believe that if we get it right this November, this is less than 30 days from now, guys. We do not want to wake up on November 6th and ask ourselves, what more could we have done to get this right for our country in our hour of need? Our founding fathers made a sacrifice. 56 men signed the Declaration of Independence. 12 of them had their homes ransacked and burned to the British all the way until their death. Five of them were tortured by the British until their death. Nine died in the American Revolution. Three more of them had their own kids die in the American Revolution. They didn't do it for them. They did it for us so we could be here 250 years later enjoying the blessings of liberty in the greatest nation known to the history of mankind. So we will not be the generation that screws it up. We're going to fix it in our 1776 moment. That's less than 30 days from right now. You send Donald Trump, J.D. Vance, Dave McCormick, and the rest of our Republican crew back to the White House and to Washington, D.C., then no, we don't have to be this nation in decline. We still can be a nation in our ascent, maybe even the early stages of our ascent, still on our way to that shining city on a hill, that country where we will look our kids in the eye and mean it when we tell them, You get ahead in the United States with your own hard work, your own commitment, your own dedication, and that you know what? You are free to speak your mind at every step of the way. That is the American dream. That is what we are running to. That is what won us the American Revolution. That is what reunited us after the Civil War. That is what won us two world wars and the Cold War. That is what still gives hope to the free world. And if we can revive that dream, over group identity and victimhood and grievance, then nobody in the world, not a nation, not a corporation, not a virus, not China, and certainly not Kamala Harris is going to defeat us. That is what American exceptionalism is all about, and that is what we will get when we send your next president, Donald J. Trump, back to the White House. Thank you all. God bless you and your families. God bless the state of Pennsylvania, and may God bless our United States of America, USA.